In this project, we want a list that can show some expenses. And previously we would have done that using an at state array of objects. Here though, we're going to take a different approach. We're going to create an expenses class that will be attached to our list using at observed object. This might sound like we're overcomplicating things a little, but it actually makes things much easier because we can make the expenses class load and save itself seamlessly. It'll be almost invisible, as you'll see. First, we need to decide what an expense is. What do we want it to store? In this instance, it'll be three things. The name of the item, whether it's business or personal, and its cost as an integer. We'll add more to this later, but for now we can represent all that using a single expense item struct. You can put this next code into a new Swift file called expenseitem.swift, but you don't need to. You can just put it into contentview.swift if you like, as long as you don't put it inside the content view struct itself. Regardless of the way you put it, this is the code to use. Struct expense item, let name string, let type string, let amount int. Now that we have something that represents a single expense, the next step is to create something to store an array of those expense items inside a single object. This needs to conform to the observable object protocol, and we're also going to use at published to make sure change announcements get sent whenever the array gets modified. As with the expense item struct, this will start off simple and we'll add to it later, so add this new class now. Class expenses conforms to observable object, at published, var items equals an array of expense item. That finishes all data required for our main view. We have a struct to represent a single item of expense and a class to store an array of all those items. Let's now put that into action with our Swift UI view, so we can actually see our data on the screen. Most of our view will just be a list showing the items in our expenses. But because we want users to delete items they no longer want, we can't just use a simple list. We need to use a for each inside the list so we can get access to the onDelete modifier. First, we need an at observed object property in our view that will create an instance of our expenses class. So we'll say at observed object var expenses equals expenses. Remember, using at observed object here asks SwiftUI to watch the object for any change announcements. So anytime one of our at published properties changes, the view will refresh its body. Second, we can use that expenses object with a navigation view, a list, and a for each to create our basic layout. We'll say navigation view, list, for each, expenses.items, id, backslash dot name, item in, text, item dot name, then navigation bar title, i expense. That tells the for each to identify each expense item uniquely by its name then print the name out as a list row. We're going to add two more things to our simple layout before we're done. The ability to add new items for testing purposes and the ability to delete items with a swipe. We're going to let users add their own items soon, but it's important to check that our list actually works before we continue. So we're going to add a trailing bar button item that adds example expense item instances for us to work with. So add this modifier to the list now. Dot navigation bar items, trailing, Button, action, let expense equals expense item, name test, type personal, amount five. Self.expenses.items.append, expense, and inside the button, image, system name, plus. That brings our app to life. You can launch it now, then press the plus button repeatedly to add lots of testing expenses. Now that we can add expenses, we can also start to remove them. This means adding a method capable of deleting an index set of list items, then passing that directly onto our expenses array. Func remove items at offsets index set. Expenses dot items dot remove at offsets offsets. And to attach that to Swift UI, we add an on delete modifier to our for each like this. Dot on delete perform remove items. Go ahead and run the app now. Press plus a few times, then swipe to delete the rows. Now try doing it while looking carefully. What do you notice? You should see that adding items works fine, but deleting them behaves just a little bit oddly. Swipe a little on the first row, then tap its delete button. 
you should see the road slides back into place as normal, then the item at the end of the list gets removed. What's going on? Well, it turns out we've lied to SwiftUI, and that lie is coming back to cause problems.